In this video we're going to look at the order of operations. This should be a review for you <coughs> and I'll just show you what examples we'll do. Uh, this one, this example, this, um, these examples here and these examples. So this should be just like what you have in your homework. <coughs> so let's have a look at what the order of operations is. Well, we can remember a thing called PEMDAS that helps us and it's parentheses exponents multiply divide add subtract so we start we do parentheses first then exponents we multiply divide add and then subtract well actually it's a little slightly more complicated than that and I'll show you why the first thing you do is you do parentheses or any type of grouping symbol so it could be a parentheses or a square root symbol or a fraction bar where you've got uh, fractions going on do the fraction do figure top and bottom of the fraction first and then apply the, the the division so basically grouping symbols would be parentheses uh, square root fraction bar um, and then we'll do exponents so things like you know your cube that's an exponent and uh, then third is multiply fourth is divide well not exactly the third thing you do is you multiply or divide from left to right okay and we always go from left to right so we'll put that up here left to right always go from left to right and we'll explore what that means in a minute and add or subtract is the fourth thing and you go from left to right okay so <clears throat> just for, you know for a quick example if we had um, 5 uh, minus 3 plus 1 okay what do we do first? Well, we should add or subtract from left to right. So we should do this. 5 minus 3 gives 2. 2 plus 1 gives 3. The answer is 3. Incorrectly, 5 minus 3 plus 1. If you were to do it incorrectly, you might like to um, do this. 5 minus, add the 3 and 1 to get 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, that would be wrong. Okay. So let's have a look at this example. And do we see any parentheses? There's no parentheses. Are there any exponents? Yes, there are three cubes. So apply that immediately. Now the cube is just touching the three, and it's not applied to this negative. So this is just 27. Okay. So we have minus and you know five times six, twelve minus eight divided by four plus. And we always go from left to right. And so we've taken care of exponents. Now we go from left to right and multiply or divide. See that? Left to right and multiply or divide. So, oh, here's a division. So we've got to do this one. Here's a multiplication. We've got to do that. So 12 minus 8 divided by 4 gives 2. 5 times 6 gives 30. And then minus 27. Okay. Now we go from left to right and add or subtract. So and addition and subtraction are the same importance. Multiplication and division have the same importance. And you must go from left to right. Okay. So 12 minus 2 is 10. And then you could add the 30 if you like. Well, we'll just write it down. Plus 30, you know, minus 27. 10 plus 30 is 40. Minus 27 gives 30. Okay. Question 30a. One half times this. You could turn a half into 0 0.5. You could put it in your calculator like this. See that? Clear. Uh, 1. Sorry, put over here. 1 divided by 2, press enter. 0 0.5. Right? So that's 0 0.5 times 5.8 times. And um, we've got to do parentheses first. Okay? So we've got to add these together before we multiply anything, and that should make 9.6, right? So on the calculator, you can put that in and multiply it. Um, you know, 0.5 times 5.8 times uh, 9.6, right? So 27.84. Okay, how about this one here? 4 over 3 times pi times this, all to the power of 3. We need to know our order of operations, PEMDAS, to simplify this expression. So, 
first thing we do is parentheses. There is a parentheses here, so we'll, what we do is we, we calculate what's inside the parentheses first. 1.65 divided by 2. 1.65 divided oh, oh, divided by 2, press enter. So we should get 0 0.825, and that's cubed, and you have pi here, and then 4 thirds. Now, pi is a universal constant, okay? You might be familiar with it. And you should have a look at this um, key here, the, the calculator key that has the uh, little hat on it, or there should be a little pi in the corner, okay? Pi symbol. So look for that, and it corresponds with the color for the second key. So if you press um, the second button, and then press this button, that should give you pi. So second pi and there it is and now press enter and it says 3.14159 and so on okay so um, just for fun we could we could just um, round that down to be say 3.14 right and now four thirds is four divided by three press enter 1.3223 which is a rational number and of course 1.333 and so on can be written 1.3 with a bar on the 3 to show the 3 is continuing and that's 4 thirds so if you want you could round that to 1.333 say or 1.33 how about that doesn't really matter so when we're calculating these step by step we're going to be you know it's not going to be exact but we'll be close enough so we've we've um Put in a decimal approximation for four thirds and for pi. Now we can figure out the cubed part. This exponent is just applied to this number here. It's not applied to these because it's just touching this, okay? So we've got to cube that, so 0 0.825, and we can do this to the power of, sorry, 825, to the power of is the hat button again, to the power of 3. Press enter. Okay. So um, that's approximately 0 0.5615, say, and multiply this by these numbers, 1.33 and then 3.14, and we should get the approximate answer, 1.33 times 3.14 times uh, point, or rather, 0 0.56. One five press enter two point uh, three four four nine and so on. So approximately two point three four five, right? <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at simplifying fractions. We'll start with this one here, 3 minus 7 over 4 minus negative 4. Obviously, be easiest to calculate the top and then the bottom and then divide, right? That would be the thing to do. 3 minus 7, two ways to think about it. You have $3, you subtract $7, you're in debt by 4, negative 4. Or you can remember the rule that subtraction can be written plus negative okay subtraction can be changed to plus negative okay oh, need bear marker for that sorry plus negative um so we can for form we can write that three plus negative seven now that's three positives and seven negatives makes four negatives negative four four minus negative four subtract have four dollars subtract a bill of four dollars um then you will have eight dollars in fact negative negative can be changed to plus plus okay negative and negative can be changed to plus plus so we can change that to plus plus four plus positive four is positive eight and we have a negative four over a positive eight and we can do this um four to four goes once four to eight goes twice 
We have negative 1 over 2, or negative 1 half. That's a negative fraction. And also remember that, um, you know, this could be also be written negative 1 over 2, or and that, that's the same as uh, 1 over negative 2, and that's the same as negative 1 over 2. So um, this is a negative fraction here. This is positive over negative, which makes a negative. This is negative over positive, which makes a negative. Okay? So these are all equivalent. So go ahead and calculate this one. Negative 2 minus 4 over this. Again, you have subtraction can be changed to plus negative. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. Negative negative changes to plus plus. Negative 21 plus positive 3. 21 negatives and 3 positives makes 18 negatives. Okay. Now negative over negative makes positive. And 6 into 6 goes once. 6 into 18 goes 3 times. So that's positive 1 third. Okay. Let's have a look at these square roots here. Square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Um, what we're supposed to do, of course, is consider the square root to be a grouping symbol. Do everything inside it first. So we remember uh, PEMDAS, and we do parentheses first, or grouping symbols first. Okay. So the, the square root is a grouping symbol. We've got to do that first. Oh, everything inside it, so we've got to do this. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So going by PEMDAS, we do inside here first, and we get root 25. And what times itself gives 25? What number multiplied by itself gives 25? The answer is 5, right? Square root of 25. A common mistake people make is they do this. At this step, okay, they say this. It's root 9 plus root 16. Okay, why is that wrong? Can you see why that's wrong? See, root 9 would give 3, root 16 would give 4, and that's 7. So, you know, why is 5 correct and 7 incorrect? Can you see why that would be? Well, again, one way is to remember PEMDAS. We've got to do everything inside the grouping symbol first. In other words, turn this into 25, and then take the square root. So, this way we would not follow PEMDAS. Okay. Incorrect. Now, let's have a look at this one. We have 5 minus negative 3 all squared. Negative negative makes plus plus. 5 and 3 is 8, so it's 8 squared inside. Now, negative 3 minus 3 is negative 3 plus negative 3, which is negative 6 all squared. Okay? And it's inside a square root. Now, again, a square root is a grouping symbol. So we do everything inside the square root first, and then we get the answer. 8 squared is 8 times 8, 64. Negative 6 squared, it's not negative 36. What it is is, it's negative 6 times negative 6, which is positive 36. Okay? So we have 64 plus 36. And again, we have to add these together first to get 100. And root of 100 is, what times itself gives 100? 10, right? So now you go ahead and calculate this one. And you should get the answer 13. This should be 13. So press pause on the video. Remember also to use full screen. Full screen is in the bottom right hand of the screen. Pause is down here. So put it in full screen and press pause and try and do, do this one by yourself. Okay? So now I'll do it. Negative 2 minus 3. You're in debt $2. You take $3 away. You're more in debt. In debt by 5. Or change the subtract to plus negative. Now it's negative th 2 plus negative 3. That's negative 5. Then square it. Plus 11 minus negative 1. You have $11. You take away a debt of 1. If you take away a debt, that's a good thing. So now you have $12. Plus plus. Okay, so that makes 12. 
and then we square it. And remember that this negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which is positive 25. So this is square root of 25 plus 12 squared is 144. Add those together and we get square root of 169, which is 13. The answer is 13. Okay. Uh, by the way, another common error is people like to do this. They do, they do things like this. They go root 16 okay, equals root 4 which is 2. What's wrong with that? Can you see why that is wrong? They took the square root in the 16, then they took the square root on the answer which is 4, and then you know you cannot you just take the square root one time and then it goes away. Root 169 is 13 and that's it you're done. It's not root 13. The answer is not root 13, okay? Root 16 is just 4, not root 4. Root 16 is 4. And that's the answer. Okay, so this is wrong. See that? Okay, having a look at calculating this. This is in a thing called the quadratic formula. Fractions like this appear. You might have seen that in Math 65. Negative, negative 2. Negative, double negative makes a positive. Positive 2. Plus. And the trick with calculating these is always calculate this square root guy first. Okay. So, negative 1 all squared, of course, is, whoops, negative 1 times negative 1, which makes positive 1. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21, and then it's times negative 3, okay? Now, this is 1, and then uh, negative 20, this, you could think of this subtract as plus negative, Okay, so it's 1 plus negative 21 times negative 3, which gives a positive, and that's a positive 63. So this makes square root of 64, which is the number 8. Not root 8, just the number 8. Okay, so we have 2 plus 8 over negative 2 times 3. Negative times positive is a negative, negative 6. So this gives us 10 over negative 6. And positive over negative is a negative. So it's a negative fraction. 2 to 10 goes 5 times. 2 to 6 goes 3 times. So the answer is negative 5 thirds. In algebra, you always have to simplify the fraction. Put it in lowest terms, always. If you like, you can write that negative 1 and 2 thirds as an improper. That's okay. This way, in fact, you know what? Do it both ways. Put it as a mixed, or, or sorry, as a mixed number. Here it is a mixed number, and as an improper fraction, both ways. Okay. So go ahead and work on this one. Negative negative three, positive three, minus. And again, the trick is figure this square root guy out on its own. It makes it a lot simpler. Negative 3 all squared is negative 3 times negative 3, right? Positive 9. And then we have negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 times 1, positive 16. Add these together, root 25, which makes 5. Not root 5, just 5, okay? So we have 3 minus 5 over negative 2 times negative 4. Negative times negative makes positive 8, right? 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So you have negative 2 over 8. And again, negative over positive makes a negative. It's a negative number. <clears throat> 2 into 2 goes once. 2 into 8 goes 4 times. So the answer is negative 1 quarter. Okay?